Hello, welcome to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. This week we're talking about quite a few spectral modeling approaches. We are combining the sinusoidal and harmonic analysis uh, that we talked in the last few weeks with uh, the idea of residual and stochastic approximation of this residual. So in this uh, demonstration uh, class, I want to talk about one particular model, the, the harmonic plus residual model. So the idea of analyzing the harmonics of a sound, subtracting them from, uh, from the original signal and obtaining the residual, which then can be combined, of course, with the harmonics that we have identified. So let's uh, use the SMS tools that we have been uh, uh, talking about and, and developing in the in the course, and uh, let's uh, start with the DFT and let's start with uh, with a sound with this organ uh, sound uh, that we have in the SMS tools uh, directory. Let's listen to that and we we'll listen with headphones so that we can uh, uh, listen more carefully. Okay, so this uh, is a quite. Uh, very stable tone um, and uh, it, uh, it's a very traditional uh, standard uh, sound of an organ. Uh, so in order to analyze we want to be able to uh, distinguish uh, the harmonics of uh, this sound. So this is a C3 which is around 264 Hertz. So in order to uh, find uh, what is a good uh, window size well, let's use the Blackman window. This is a very stable note, so we can uh, take advantage of a longer window and really try to isolate the harmonics as much as possible. So that's six bins for the, the, um, the Blackman window, and then sampling rate is 44,100, and then we divide by the uh, frequency of this uh, note, uh, 264. So that gives me a uh, 1,002 samples that uh, make sense to analyze. Okay, so let's put 1,003 to make it uh, uh, an odd window. And, uh, okay, let's use uh, 2,048 uh, FFT size, so with uh, quite a bit of zero padding. Uh, that's uh, good. And uh, so let's compute it. Okay, so this is the... the the samples that uh, we are analyzing. We are analyzing six periods of uh, the sound. It clearly looks very sinusoidal and from the magnitude spectrum we see that there is not that many clear harmonics even though there is quite a bit of energy in the high uh, frequency range uh, but it doesn't have all these clear uh, sinusoids. So this is uh, an indication that it's a sound that has quite a bit of uh, kind of noise-like or kind of a, a stochastic component into that. Uh, well, the phase uh, looks uh, as expected and of course the reconstruction is quite good. Okay, so this looks like a, a decent uh, uh, approach. Of course, we could maybe, given that it's um, stable, we could uh, take a bigger uh, window size. So let's try that. Let's try like uh, twice as much. So let's uh, try 2006 samples and uh, then let's even do a bigger FFT. Let's uh, use uh, 4096. Okay, so we are uh, doing quite, uh, quite a bit of, uh, of zero padding. And well, here the time was uh, in two seconds, which is good. The, the, the sound is quite long, so we're kind of in the middle. So let's uh, do that. Okay, this looks uh, twice as many samples, like uh, we are analyzing uh, like tw 12 uh, periods. And yes, now we are seeing a little bit uh, more things in the spectrum. If you compared the, the previous one to the current one, we are seeing the, the harmonics uh, maybe more defined uh, and we are seeing uh, quite a bit of uh, background uh, things. So maybe now we are seeing a little bit uh, higher harmonics than we were seeing before because with the higher window we kind of reduce uh, this uh, background um, because it's not, uh, it's not a very uh, uh, coherent type of signal so it, it emphasizes the coherent parts, the harmonics and reduces uh, this uh, kind of uh, stochastic component. 
Okay, so this uh, seems to be a good choice. Uh, so let's go to the STFT and apply the same parameters. So let's apply the Blackman. Well, let's first open the sound, uh, the organ sound. Let's uh, use this uh, 2006 uh, uh, samples that uh, we took. Okay, and let's use the 4096 uh, FFT size. Uh, here now we have to choose a hop size. Uh, well, here uh, I don't think it matters that much, but let's uh, just uh, use maybe uh, 500, uh, uh, so one fourth to to be able to overlap with the black one. In fact, it should be even more, but uh, for efficiency uh, purposes, let's just leave it uh, like that. Okay, let's uh, compute this. Uh, this will take a little bit longer because, of course, it's a longer sound and uh, FFT is quite uh, big. Okay, so this is what we're getting. Of course, the resynthesized, no need to listen to it because it's uh, going to be quite, uh, quite identical. And now, uh, well, we see the horizontal lines. May maybe let's zoom into uh, the lower areas. Okay, and so that uh, we can see a little bit better the harmonics. The harmonics look uh, clearly very well defined, uh, but there is uh, quite a few things in between. Okay, that seems to be a good choice. Now let's uh, do the harmonic analysis, again using the same parameters. Uh, so we'll go to the organ, uh, let's say the Blackman, let's use the 2006, and let's use uh, 4096 as the FFT size and now we have to choose the parameters to identify the peaks and the harmonics the magnitude threshold okay minus 90 uh, that uh, looks like a reasonable one the the duration of the harmonics here since we are in a long stable node we can even afford to put a longer uh, type of track so at least uh, let's say that they have to last for uh, uh, 0 0.2 seconds or it could be even more the number of harmonics, the truth is that there is not that many uh, because they kind of disappear. So I would say that uh, with uh, uh, 30 or 40 harmonics uh, should be uh, plenty. And uh, we know the fundamental frequency, to, uh, 264, so uh, it, uh, the range has to be uh, for, uh, for that. So 130 and 300, 264 is within that. So maybe we can even make this uh, uh, higher so that it makes sure that it fits correctly. Okay, that sounds good. And uh, this is the error uh, for the fundamental frequency detection. Uh, I mean, it should be a very clear fundamental. There should not be a problem with that. And uh, this uh, deviation, uh, this is uh, how we will allow the harmonics to deviate from perfect harmonicity. So let's leave it like this and see what happens. Okay, let's uh, compute it. Uh, again, this will take a little bit longer. Okay, um, so we found um, quite a few harmonics. And uh, of course, in the attack and decay is very unstable, so maybe we should have rejected those. Uh, but what is interesting is that uh, the, some harmonics are quite stable, but some are very unstable. Let's listen to the resynthesize sound okay it uh, it sounds good uh, let's compare with the original well if you pay attention clearly the original has this uh, more uh, air in the background uh, that is not in the Synthesized because it's only the mainly the harmonics, but the truth is that also some of these higher harmonics are very unstable. So maybe it's not right to consider them as harmonics because uh, uh, they they are basically maybe tracking some noise part. So one way to get rid of that is to reduce this deviation and restrict it even more. For example, let's put uh, 0.001. Um, and then let's see what happens. Okay, now it got rid of some of these um, partials, 
Uh, but maybe an even better way to do that is uh, to make sure that they are long enough. So instead of having point 0.2, let's make sure that, okay, that the harmonics should be at least one second to be considered. Okay, now we got rid of quite a lot of these higher unstable either harmonics or components. Let's listen to the synthesized sound. <laughs> That sounds quite clean and, and definitely, uh, of course, not as rich as the original sound. Okay, now we can go with these same parameters to the harmonic plus residual, so to uh, subtract these harmonics from uh, the original signal. So let's uh, use the same sound. Uh, let's use this uh, 2006 uh, window size. 4096, the threshold was minus uh, 90, the minimum duration of a uh, uh, track, uh, I think we put 0.4 or uh, we put, I uh, know, we put one second, so okay, so uh, one second, a uh, number of harmonics, uh, now definitely we can put less, we can even put uh, just uh, 30. Uh, and here we have to make sure it was within that, so let's say 130 to, uh, to 350, so that is within that for sure, it will find it no problem. And the uh, error, I don't think this matters uh, too much, but here we uh, put uh, 0, 0, I think that's two zeros, okay, we'll, we'll leave it like that. Okay, let's now uh, compute uh, this. Okay, uh, this is uh, what uh, we got, and uh, let's, uh, let's see, so here we see the harmonics it found, the black lines, and the background spectrogram is the residual. And uh, we can listen to the different components, so we can listen, uh, well, just the sinusoid, the harmonics, we already uh, heard that, let's listen to the residual. Yeah, that's a very clear uh, and nice sound that uh, is what it was missing from this uh, harmonic sound. So clearly if we put these two sounds together, uh, they will sound like the original. with the original yeah that's uh, an identity basically so this was a good sound uh, to to explore the potential of the harmonic plus residual of course uh, if we take time varying sounds uh, that may be a little bit more tricky and uh, we will have to tune uh, the parameters a little bit more but uh, with that, I think uh, you get an idea of uh, what uh, the harmonic plus residual model and the tool uh, within the SMS tools that uh, implements this model, what it can do. So I encourage you to play around, of course, uh, choose other sounds, uh, maybe more uh, complex sounds and uh, sounds that uh, change uh, in time. So we have uh, talked about the harmonic plus residual model, and this is one instance of the models that uh, we are talking about uh, this week. On the next uh, demonstration uh, lecture, I want to talk about the harmonic plus stochastic model so that we can uh, model this residual that we just heard as an stochastic signal and see uh, what it can do. So I will see you uh, next lecture. Thank you.